lovely guests for you tonight who are very intelligent and well-spoken. There's Sherry Smith and Jill Jeanette and Sherry wrote a book titled From Mental Illness to Freedom and what, what gave you the inspiration for that book? Uh, the inspiration came through um, me as a child. Um, I had uh, mental challenges uh, growing up, and um, I had it uh, through my bloodline, um, ADD, schizophrenia, suicide, uh, compulsive dis disorders, uh, split personality, um, suicidal thoughts. Um, um, I was in special ed all my life. Um, never could read or write or function like I psychologically like I'm supposed to. Um, bipolar and um, it, it goes on and on. Okay, and, and now how did Jill help you to overcome all this? Well, in uh, 2012, um, I was uh, just uh, crying out in my heart to the Lord. Um, I was on psychotic drugs all my life since five. Uh, so basically the Lord brought me to Women Empowering Women and brought me to Jill Janik. Um, it, was, uh, it was set up from the Lord. Um, and uh, the launching uh, date was in January of 2012, I remember. I came to uh, the opening of Women Empowering Women. Now, you developed Women Empowering Women. What inspired you to do that? Um, what inspired me was that I had my own journey of being empowered by the Lord um, to overcome mental health, had some mental illness for a season in time, lupus, fibromyalgia, uh, but emotional healing as well as um, needed deliverance myself from oppression and generational curses. And so um, also I knew there was more in me, but it seemed like fear and anxiety and depression and disorders were keeping me from who I really knew I could be, but I didn't know how to get there. And I had a lot of opposition and walls that I had to overcome. And so through a seven year process, the Holy Spirit and Jesus uh, brought me through the wisdom that I needed to actually come out in freedom from all of those elements, but now also build a business and also be able to uh, 
empower other women to go through their healing process, but also to be able to have their own businesses, their own movements, and actually really bring freedom to other women so that they can go back in society and make a difference. Thank you. Okay, how long have you been uh, running this business before Terry came to you? Um, 2000, actually, um, my journey was 2000 to 2007. And then four years after that, I was out ministering. But then the Lord gave me an eight hour visitation uh, about women empowering women and saying, now I want you to go back and get the women that are just like you. So I kind of stopped everything. And then he showed me the, um, the blueprint of it. And that actually was 2012, which Sherry came 2012 in August was really when we started. But then I had a conference starting in 2012, um, January. And then Sherry came and she, um, she was looking for love, she was looking for acceptance, family and community. And with Women Empowering Women, we're about love, we're about grace, and we're about giving people a chance and going through um, uh, understanding that if I've overcome it and other women have been there themselves, that we can give a lot of mercy and grace to help people walk through a process without uh, putting them down and, and just really being afraid of them, you know, but really just embracing with mercy and compassion. So she's been with me ever since, since 2012, but um, because she's wanted to learn in every area of spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, financial, and health, that she wanted to be all that God wanted her to create her to be. She wanted to know the real her, the real uh, what's inside of her. And the Lord allowed me to see the treasure when other people didn't and all the people would um, really run from her because they didn't know what to do with her, but yet she loved people and they loved her, but they just said, that's just Sherry, you know. But I said, no, she's a, she's a woman of God and I seen me in her. In other words, I knew that I had to get out of my own skin what God did for me. And now God's gonna give me grace for her. No, there, are there any specific churches you work with or you work with all of them? wherever I'm invited to come, I wanna help with women. Um, I had a women's ministry at our local church, um, and then I would help women on radio and TV, as well as uh, discipling women like through our network. Um, my real goal is now that the ladies have overcome, that we'll have Women Empowering Women sequel part two, not just going through um, the process of the wilderness, but now overcoming it, and now having the great the God's grace and glory and story, so women can See, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, yeah. but what's often overlooked is that there's a dark stain just below the surface that's also visible. Don't let the fact that I'm from a small southern town allow you to think that my congregation hasn't been through hell. I didn't mean to upset you. Yep, they're gonna see Trigger coming and really want to kick y'all's ass. Y'all. <laughs> She's a sleeper, never gonna catch you. Behold, folks, ah, nitrous. Ah. No offense, figured you more like a horse and buggy type, bus pass kind of guy. Ah. Ah. Do you know where you are? Your grandma's house. Shh. I spent the last seven years settled down, and what has it gotten me? I'm standing in a pool of blood on top of a stack of bodies. You better dig yourself a hole, little man, because we're about to bury you in it. All right, let's do this. Gabe told me about your past. I want to know, where's that spark, that warrior? 
open the gates. Take in the death. Let them greet. Protect them. Metka Pru. Sunshine. I see uh, well, it's, it's God first, um, but um, I see me and uh, Apostle Jill um, teaming up um, like diamond and silk, but in in, in an authentic way for us. Um, there's a lot of building going on right now, a lot of building blocks, right. um, a lot of transformation is happening um, under um, undercover when it comes to, you know, um, job, environment, um, structure, discipline, character building, um, mm. basically uh, social skills, when to speak, when not to speak. Um, so I'm being equipped right now, and there's a lot of building going on right now with me and the Lord first. Um, but I just see me and Apostle Jill um, traveling. Um, going to uh, different uh, venues, churches, um, cities, different states. Um, this is a new wineskin. Um, this has not been seen before. And, and where have you traveled so far? Well, um, with Women Powering Women and Apostle Jill. Mm -hmm. um, I've traveled with her to Port Huron. Um, also, we've gone to Washington, D.C. Okay. Um, for um, basically um, President Donald J. Trump. Yes. Um, and uh, we got with the Christians, um, also evangelizing on the streets. Uh, we go uh, basically, um, we go to different parks. Uh, uh, basically, it's out. It's outdoors. It's not in because the freedom doesn't really connect with the indoor. Mm -hmm. um, but it's connecting, it connects with the souls outside of um, the uh, religious establishments. I honor all of them, and, uh, but um, God has another way of connecting. Now, Donald Trump, according to what I've read, mm -hmm. uh, put us in 10 times when he recognized Jerusalem is the capital of Israel and moved our embassy there. That finished reestablishing Israel as a nation. And they, uh, some people said he had the Cyrus mm -hmm. anointing. Mm -hmm. and, and Cyrus, of course, was uh, famous from the Old Testament for conquering Babylon and putting the uh, Jews back in Israel and making Jerusalem the capital. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, did you did you meet the president or? No, we uh, weren't able, but we actually went uh, during the time where uh, um, actually Billy Graham's son, um, oh, yeah. you know, was there actually, and all of the people were there, and so we wanted to be there during that time. I don't know if you remember that. It was Franklin in, Graham was there. Franklin Graham, exactly. Yes. So my, we will be meeting him. I really believe that. I believe that God has given my husband dreams about it and us dreams. 
but I, I know that all of this is a new order of reform. Yes. So the old systems of the medical systems are dying out and they're, they're killing people. Yes, they are. And so we believe in the doctors, we believe in protocols that God said, every, all the Father of Lights, he's the, every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of Lights. There's no shadow of turning. But what has happened is that man's greed and money, and uh, we've seen how it's pillaging and enslaving and raping and killing people. And so now the new systems of government, of the government of God, are going to be raised up in the seven mountain mandates. So we see Hollywood going to become Hollywood. We see media, education, the government, and the church all taking a facelift. Right. And they're getting reformed with new leaders coming to bring kingdom principles, righteousness, and truth according to God's deliverance plan and freedom. Freedom, whether it's freedom in, um, freedom in finances, freedom in health care, like the freedom that God intended for, for mankind to live under his principles and rule, whether it's the education, school system, whatever that might be. So we're yes. just really bringing the one aspect of um, the health care reform in the mental health community and even cancer, uh, from cancer to a crown when I overcome cancer, God wants me to bring uh, that reform to people to really get set free of cancer and really know how to use the medical system but not rely on it and put your trust in it. Put your trust in God and let him lead you out as, as well he has led Sherry out of mental illness. He led me out of cancer. So well, that's our heart. And there are many more folks here mm -hmm. that the pharmaceutical industry doesn't want you to get your hands on. Right because they sell the drugs that mm -hmm. supposedly cure you. Some do and some don't. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of them have such horrible side effects. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, I've seen so many people who, well, especially men, mm. who have been put on drugs. And uh, a friend of mine, when he was in high school, bench pressed almost 500 pounds. Mm. By the time he was in his late 50s and I was in my mid 60s, he was having me come over and move stuff or help him move stuff that needed to be moved because he couldn't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. And I wondered what happened. Then he'd say, oh, got to go get my scripts. And I thought, oh, oh that's wow. what happened to him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some of that, those prescription uh, medicines are terrible for you. Well, pharmacia is a form of witchcraft and it will affect the mind. But there is a place for medication. God did make, I believe, allow things. But again, it's all been about money and then making it more synthetic and more chemicalized than it right. was originally intended. And also, um, there's natural cures and alternatives, but if it's gone too far, like even Sherry, back when she was a child, like she didn't really, no one knew what to do. So that's all they did. Uh, so now we realize that that is more being exposed, more natural alternatives. But there's people that have been on drugs for a long time, so you have to help transition them off yeah. through a time of building up their brain, their amygdala, pituitary, hypothymus, pineal gland, thyroid, adrenals, everything that was weakened by cortisol, which is the flight or flight response when you're under fear and anxiety. Right. And if you live in trauma all your life, shock all your life, and your environment is, does not never find peace, you're always gonna actually live, begin to live in fear and worry and anxiety is gonna be a part of who you are. Yes. And that affects your, all of your systems. Well, yes. Yes, it does. And that's what happened with Sherry. And if I would ask Sherry a question, it's like, uh, tell me a little bit about, tell them a little bit about your food, how you had to transition when I was starting coaching in food, and what were some of the challenges you had to transition, but what did you do that you found that you had to do to get to the place where your, your brain actually is built up now? Uh, the transition was basically I, I um, got off of box food, um, I was on it uh, basically all my life. Um, there was no home cooking. There was always fast food. Um, sometimes home cooking, but I had a transition uh, from an orphan mentality spirit where right. um, food was uh, my drug and my escape because of me being, being alone for so long. But I've had it since I was a child. And it, it came through trauma and you know um, uh, just being uh, misunderstood and nobody really that uh, could get me so that was my comfort but it 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 was uh, kept building as the years went by and then right. it started um, uh, putting more uh, pressure and more pain on my brain 
and uh, it was backfiring. So the food, the, uh, the food in industry, um, now it's so chemical based. Yes. And they do it purposely where um, they're manufacturing um, uh, drugs in, in it now. And there's stuff that they're putting in it, uh, psychosis and uh, uh, hallucinations. And that's what I started getting was uh, I was feeling psychotic. I was having hallucinations. Um, and it was making a split personality, more personalities because of the boxed. Uh, it's not even food. It's basically like a mind control in right. a way where it's so doped up with different uh, chemicals and drugs. So you crave it more. And then mm -hmm. I would go from um, McDonald's, I would go to Wendy's and I would fiend for it. So I would have wrappers in my car, um, in my trunk, and I would just gorge it down because it, is, it, it was a comfort and it was love but it was, it was wrapped up into witchcraft. Um, on top of that, um, I, I had uh, the medication I was taking. I was, was uh, basically, it was not medication. It was uh, pharmacia witchcraft. So everything was combining together. Right. But now as far as what you're eating now, so I had to work with her for seven years every mm -hmm. day to break the addictions and the choices. I would get in her business, what are you eating? I do, I see this, I see that, because I'd be praying and I see it. She goes, oh gosh. So she tried to hide some things even though she's breaking through, but we had to break through, break through because of the food addictions. And also, um, uh, you know, her not wanting to, you know, as women don't want to gain weight, so then they want to end up having the x lax So she did a lot of that too. Mm -hmm. Oh so boy. she wanted to eat the food, but then get rid of it. Yeah. But then she had a lot of digestion problems. See, all the, the digestion, the brain health is in the gut. So if you have a bad right. gut, you'll have a bad brain anyways. Yes. So yes. I had to work with her intestines, her colon, to get a cleaning out, the right foods. So that way she didn't have to take any drugs for that now because of being so bound up by the fast food and processed food and the addiction to it. So we had to work on not only the food, but the addiction and also the sugar addiction is even stronger than they say cocaine. They yeah. put mice in a lab and they put the cocaine and sugar and the mice kept going back to the sugar more than the cocaine. <laughs> so we know that sugar actually, it makes you acidic. It removes a B complex, B vitamins out of your brain and right. it depletes everything. And it actually, so she, you would do three or four or five packs of sugar in her coffee. Whoa. And, you know, and so I would have to, you know, catch her on that. So because it was everything extreme because she was trying to escape yes. and she was trying to get a high to escape and getting what only God's love can bring her and the love of people around her. So she had to uh, start eating the right foods. But once she started doing that, she started getting healthier. It, so it wasn't just the emotional healing, which was important and the deliverance and retraining her false belief systems and lies she believed, which was very deep but also if you don't eat right and you don't eat right you're never going to get to the 100 percent no. that you're wanting to get to no you're never going to do that mm -hmm. and there's some stuff that's come out in recent years that's uh, very bad stuff these fentanyl patches i've read are terrible right some of the medical things the fentanyl and, and, oh wow yeah and and what i found out too i'll pity uh, piggyback oh, yeah. on uh, apostle jill here uh, what i found out too was that i found out i was taking a horse tranquilizer at five, oh but they goodness. discontinued it in 1990. So, uh, you know, a lot of things have um, been developed exposed and ex too. it's been exposed, but you know. But she had so much toxic stuff, I want to be honest with you. I did detox her brain, detox all the organs, the lymphatic, yeah. and I went through that myself for what I need, what I went through for my personal, so I understood what the process I had to go through. Um, but it wasn't just one time. We had to keep developing a whole new mindset for food. Well. Yes, and, and I mentioned the fentanyl patches. Mm -hmm. In one of the Jack Reacher books, it said that fentanyl is the same as heroin, mm -hmm. and that the pharmaceutical industry had been looking for a substitute for heroin ever since it had been made illegal, mm. and now they've got it. Wow, and then all that addiction of uh, your brain and wanting the addictions of the food and the medication and yes. then the withdrawal. So we had to, I remember when we were start transitioning because she, I said, well, just keep going less and less. But a couple of times when she got off it, like her body was wobbling, she fell down and I was helping her yep. out and all that. But she wanted to, she didn't care because she was done with it. 
So That's there is good. a transition and you have to go through to trust God and have faith in knowing it's your time to get off it. And okay. have to step out. So some of those things can become a part of you like a soap. Yeah. You know, like it becomes a part of you, the drug or everything you're doing, you know. Yeah, and that, that's, now, how many are w women are in your group today? Well, actually, it was amazing. Um, we actually had quite a bit in the beginning, but I think as more as you really have to die to self, surrender and sacrifice, and it's almost like special forces, you know, where, again, there's a little bit higher rigor, rigorous training. Right. Because we're going to get delivered, we're going to get healed, we're going to get mental health, we've got to face all our fears. We gotta resist the flesh, the world, and the devil. So you're becoming a boxer in a ring. No, you're becoming a bride fit for a king. Right. And you're becoming a warrior, um, and you're actually have to, you actually have to war against your own self first, and not self-sabotage. But again, you have to be willing to repent. Right. And so you have to be willing to release, you have to be willing to forgive. And so a lot of that resistance, we've seen a lot of women at the beginning and it seemed like after that they didn't want to keep going because it's is requiring of death. Right. But also there's love there, there's healing there, and everyone works in their own timing and process. So the ranks kept going down, and I said, the Lord reminded me, he goes, well, based on most of the churches today, they would think I wasn't successful with 12 men. Right. But I poured my life into them for three years, and they changed That's the it. world upside down. We had relationship, covenant, friendship. And so now we're down to, we went to, five, but God only wanted that five because those five would help the others get birthing right. for them to overcome the, the prostitution, mental illness, oh, the yeah. incest. Yeah. And, and then even when I then, the leader, had cancer, guess what? They stayed. And they said, well, you, you loved us so much, you gave your life, why wouldn't we give you ours? So they stayed like, I was David in the cave. And they were saying, they're the mighty men. And they said, we're not leaving you. We're going to fight with you. And then now God gave me wisdom for while I was fighting in faith for what I needed to overcome. He gave me the, the secrets for to help them to break through and give birthing to now they're free. <laughs>we waited at the airport in Sarasota and saw him coming down the escalator, we were taken aback. Our usually immaculate, particular son was dressed in big baggy track pants and a sweatshirt, his long, dirty blonde hair pulled back into a ponytail. As he got closer to us, I could see his ashen face and bloodshot eyes, while his chewed fingernails shone out to me like a beacon of his inner turmoil. The signs were clear. He was on the brink of a breakdown. So it was it was powerful. So uh, we have like five women now. We're seeing a reunion now. 
because some of them not went their own way. I guess they did, but it's, we're still connected. But now we're free, so every woman should be able to find their place in society. Yes. But you still need a covering. You still need encouragement as women. So being alone is not a good thing. Oh, no. no matter how free you get, you still need community. <laughs> so we're believing um, that um, we see all the women now coming back together, and we have so much power in our group of to affect society and women to free them together. Yes. Because I couldn't do it without them. They couldn't do it without me. Sherry couldn't do it without them, and they couldn't do it without her. And we all needed each other. And, and when it comes to breaking what you discover is a bad habit, that can be a very difficult and time-consuming thing to do. Mm -hmm. I felt like um, I felt like Rocky, you know, the yeah. the movie Rocky, where uh, he was the lowest on the totem pole, and nobody um, knew who he was. Right. Um, so he he fought. Uh, he fought through his pain, through his doubt, through his fear. Mm -hmm. uh, even in being in people mocking him, laughing at him, embarrassment, um, just, you know, coming from nothing, but he never gave up. And he would be in the ring, and right. that's how Women Power Women, Apostle Jill, me, um, the other uh, beautiful, um, my sisters, I just call them, uh, they're my family. I, I they're diamonds. <laughs> yeah, they're diamonds, uh, diamonds and jewels and rubies and sapphires. They, mm -hmm. They've changed my life, and they're part of this book. This is, this is who we are and where we, we all come from. And, um, but it was just rocking the ring. The right. enemy would come in and I'd come back. And through me falling, uh, stumbling, shaking, because I'm getting off of everything. And it, it was exciting. I loved the deliverance part. I loved everything. Um, there was one time we went to a church, uh, church gathering and it was at night and there was dinner and I had on a dress, but I was coming off of everything. Well, I had the plate of a lot of food in my hand and I wanted to sit down, but because of the transition I was in and there was a fight in it, but that I made for this. So I fell with the food mm -hmm. on my lap and Apostle Jill, all she did was she kept eating, and, but she supported me through it. It wasn't, I was embarrassed of you, mm. shame on you. You know, here we are at Shabbat, you know, dinner with all these leaders and, you know, um, their high rank. You know, how could you do this to me? I'm so embarrassed of you. You know, you're wasting my time because that's what I got before. Right. But no, she took her hand and she lifted me up. And I had hope, I had the food all over me. She had a white suit on, I think, got it all over But it was okay. Yeah, it was like a bib. I looked, you know, everything was on me. But I got back up, and the other women were there. And they just huddled over me. It's okay. And other people got me a new plate of food. But that, that God showed me, God showed me that, you know, through my love and support, you know, that it's going to be okay. Well, you, you, you obviously were saying that you had love and support both at that point in time. Yes, and that then, was towards the end of the, the journey and the, the love. I said, if, any, if Women Empowering Women is all about love, it's not about um, gifting, it's about character, it's about his love, it's about preparing a bride. Right. Even greater than a warrior, but we had to war to win, and a greatest lover is the greatest warrior. And the Lord made us warriors, but also I taught him how to be uh, the bride meekness. Right. Um, humility, virtue, um, how to walk in excellence and purity and holiness, all about yeah. the heart. And that's where I say that I want to bring him into his heart, but they have to have his heart, and then you have to have a heart for one another. So it was a deep work because there was a lot of fear in their hearts, lust in their hearts. There was um, orphan in their hearts, orphan spirit. There was uh, saying, I'm unworthy, I'm not good enough, I'm not pretty enough, no one wants me. You know, and I've been through too much, I'm damaged goods. So the Lord would help me to give eyes to see them for how he sees them and giving me the grace and ability to not only love them myself, but when the women would come together, how to love each other and love women instead of com competing against one another and jealous, but how to complete and celebrate one another. So that took some time because when you're when you're not been loved and accepted and you try to get your you try to get your attention and you try to be uh, looking like um, where your identity is based on what you do. Mm -hmm. 
and your performance. A lot of, we had a lot of performers at first in our group, but then I, love disarms that and disables it. Love says, be yourself. Yes. Love says that I love you just the way you are and I'll work with you. You don't have to pay me. You don't have to work harder. You don't have to impress me, please me, or flatter me. Like, I already gonna take you in. And that's what we did with women empowering women. And then when they would argue and fight, um, I always would come in and then the Lord gave me the spirit of wisdom because so that we can actually come into unity and community and forgive one another quickly. And that's what I feel the power was with love and forgiveness. Yes. That the love and forgiveness was the power to keep us together, to be married to one another, to learn of each other's past, our cultures, our backgrounds, and really begin to know what Jesus knows about us. Now we can know us as Jesus knows us. Right. And it's so deep because then the enemy had no chance when we prayed. And he got defeated through everything, all the demons, because of the love and the unity and to respect one another and value one another. And, and that is what Jesus said when he healed people, he'd also tell them their sins were forgiven. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what you're doing is in that mode. Mm -hmm. and, and that is a good thing. And, uh, so, and you are in the process of writing the book also, aren't you? Yes, From Cancer to a Crown. And now Sherry's a part of that story. My husband, I like to have him on. Um, he was uh, General Joe. He had to actually put on his war boots and camouflage to fight for me, um, mm -hmm. which he wasn't really into the church. Uh, he knew about Jesus and was saved, but he never really came alongside, you know, as a spiritual leader. But yet the Lord, after 25 years through praying and me going through cancer, he was going to get on board all in. And he, he God sped him up over all those years to get the baptism of the Holy Ghost, to meditate, on, to declare the word, speak the word. Um, he even blew the shofar and he was there by my side and he was like a Joseph to me. His name's Joseph, provided for me. And then Sherry, she was there helping clean. She would help massage me. The ladies would come to massage me, clean for me. Um, they would sing with me. We would do worship together, pray together, study the Bible together. And then I would keep doing our morning calls at 444 to hear from God for all of us of what God was going to do and how he was going to help us to overcome. So sometimes we find ourselves just sprout all on the floor. Sometimes we'd be dancing so loud and strong. Um, my husband wasn't doing that part of it, though. <laughs> and uh, he let us use the house because we took over once we got there. Um, so he's a, he's a blessing. So he's a part of that. Sherry, it was like Joe, Sherry, and um, me. Uh, Sherry would just always give me cards, um, little teddy bears uh, come over and she saw, of all the ladies, she saw the worst of it, the pain of it. Yeah. So she got into my mess because I had gotten hers, so now she was going to get in mine and she was there to support me. So, And all the ladies prayed, all the ladies had a significant part in my healing. Um, but I always give the Lord the greatest glory and praise for what he did for all of us. And we would go to the back of we had to take uh, her to the doctors, or we, uh, you know, or we would have to. Um, I would just whatever errands or whatever. Yeah, I'd do go the with. errands. But then we went to church. She would get me in the car, and we go, mm -hmm. and I'd be in, in tongues because we had to go in tongues because the Lord said, "Go to this church. There's going to be a healing. Go to this church. There's going to be a healing." So I say, I call her up. We got to go. So she get like the Batmobile. She get in that car and get me in there. And then with the cancer, I had to always sit on my side because the cancer was down in my uh, lower area. Donut. And so I had to always just press my way through and God always would show up at every place because that's where he wanted me to be, so. No, no. Uh, was it any particular churches or just churches all over? No, just the ones that he sent me that had deliverance or healing or a word for me to help me to get through my process. Right. But it was really the Lord in me and the women empowering women and my husband and the body of Christ came together. Uh, it was different people in different churches and other people I knew that I had been in ministry for a long time that knew me. Mm -hmm. So they fought for me, but the, the church itself, um, when I would go to the church that he'd send me to at that time, because most of my church was at home, because right. I had to hear from God about my protocol, my pathway. Right. And then the women would hear for me too, because when you're in a war, you need to have others to see and hear for you. So they were there. and. Um, we had dreams and visions. God would show us the way out for not only me, but for all of us. Because what I was going to go through, now they're going to all come out with me at the same time and get their freedom. And so um, it was nine months, and the Lord healed me of cancer. 
Ooh, that's pretty good. And then actually brought the women out and we all really gave, good. when I say birthing, it might sound scary for some people, but when you get impregnated by God with a dream or vision or just what you're supposed to do in life, he right. will give you, he will birth out the dream, actually cl at first cleans you out. Right. And then he'll birth out what he's called you to do. And he'll give you, birth out your character. He'll birth out your identity. He'll birth out your authority, your destiny. He'll birth out um, everything that he died to give you to redeem back to you that enemy stolen. And then mm -hmm. now you've overcome by his grace. Now you can actually now have the grace to help others to overcome because you can't do this, any of this in your own strength. You know, whether it's your healing or giving healing because it's all his anointing. <laughs>
they got all the God they want, but they don't realize there's more freedom for them. So I don't try to push anything mm -hmm. because I'm at a point in my life now where I would love to have everyone free, but not everyone wants to be free. Well, that's true, yes. And so that's what Harriet Tubman said. She said, I wanted to save a lot more slaves. They didn't even know they were slaves. So, okay. you know, that's why we're here to let people know when they see their chains and they see they're mentally chained, physically chained, emotionally chained, then they look and say, I need help. And then we'll be there for them. Mm -hmm. I just, want to mm -hmm. um, I just want to let people know that you can do this. Um, there's going to be a happy ending to your life. Um, God will bring in the right people for you at the right time. Um, you are very special. You are very unique. You are chosen. You're smart. And you're intelligent. And most of all, you're more than enough. You are more than enough. And I just want to let everybody know that all the men and all the women out there, that you are not a throwaway, that you are someone, and you're rare, you're a jewel, you're a diamond, and you're shining. If I can do it, you can do it. And with Apostle Jill, and with God first, but with the right teacher, mentor, and leader. The sky's the limit. So don't give up. Take one day at a time and breathe. Amen. Now, you know, women have been young. Mm -hmm. Now, there would be men's groups that help men or do you work with men ever? Or? Yes, yes. I love women. Empowering women's great. Women are more vulnerable and open to receive the help. It seems more sensitive because they don't want to be where they're at. Sometimes men, it takes a little bit more to not convince them, but just to see where they need help in. Because I mean, a lot of men don't like going to the doctors. Let's just use this as an example. More women will go to the doctors. So Dr. Jesus uses me like a little Jehovah Rapha Jr. And so I can look at someone and want to help them, but then some of them don't recognize they need the help, or if they do need the help, I got to work with them where, where they're at. And that's good. So we do have men empowering men. Um, we have our husbands, which are the first fruits of that, you know, right. uh, and Sherry's husband to be coming, we believe. Because <laughs> uh, once she's whole and healed, it's like I want to tell women out there that you have to go through a process to prepare yourself for, for Jesus, your husband, and your husband. Oh, yes. You know, because you want to be able to keep that marriage. So don't take your baggage with you. Take right. responsibility to clean the house first before you meet your husband, and hopefully he's cleaning his house. <laughs> yes. And so um, the biggest thing for men is that um, we want this to expand. There's our men that I work with. I do coaching and mentoring, um, and we believe that more men will come. Um, we believe we're going to have online. We'll see more of that coming because we're going to be more exposure. Most of what we had was more intimate. So if you have more women, there's only a f maybe a few men that would come because they're, right. they're uh, sensitive, you know, as far as the spirit of God, and they know they need healing, and they don't care if women or men are there. Um, but I believe that God wants to give a building for people to come to be able to get healing so it's more um, uh, enlarged. And are you, so we'll are you see saying that. establishing a church within a building where all this healing would take place? Yes, we'd like to get something in Monroe even uh, once a month to come and to have uh, a TV show where we can get people aware of the, a better way, you know, to get healing and to actually be there to coach people through uh, the coaching, mental health coaching, um, and also if they need deliverance, healing, and just to bring them into presence because my ultimate goal is to let them, to help them to know Him because people can help, but if they don't know how to do it themselves, they're going to keep going back in the circle. Oh, yes. So yes. we want to bring them to God. And also, I want to make sure, too, before you close, um, uh, for any leaders out there, uh, leaders out there that want to invite me and uh, Sherry to your church uh, to teach on mental health, emotional healing, deliverance, because it's a specialized ministry and not a lot of churches focus on it. But I believe in these times we're living, we're going to need to be established for people coming off the streets but also people in the body of Christ, even leaders need healing, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. We see a lot of diabetes, blood sugar, cancer, uh, mental health issues, especially what we've overcome in the last few years. 
Um, so I would like to come and to be able to speak to the congregation, to help them, give them protocols, emotional healing, um, and just work with the congregation to really walk in optimal health and freedom. And also, um, again, doing mental health coaching for anyone out there that needs uh, individual coaching or a group coaching or maybe a women's group or um, any, again, any church group, even a business group. Because even the business sector, people are wanting to have that mental health uh, coaching. So we come from a different um, languages as far as communicating it, from a, a faith-based um, faith foundation, but also meeting people where they're at. So um, give us a call. May I give the number out for yes, us to call us? 734-556-2184. Uh, Again, that's 734-556-2184. And you can contact me also on Facebook, Jill, J-I-L-L, -L, Janik, J-A-N-I-E-C. And also Sherry's book, From uh, Mental Health um, Illness to Freedom. Um, you can also call me as well. Is there any other way they want to just, you just want them to call me? Yes, you can just uh, call Jill Janik. Um, if you have, uh, because we're working together as a team, uh, it's called From Mental Illness to Freedom. So um, if you have any questions, uh, please call uh, Jill Janik. Um, if you want to book us, um, call Jill Janik. Um, basically, <laughs> because I'll be I, the agent. I'll be the yeah. Because <laughs> I, I basically now I'm on a uh, uh, Women Power Women uh, Two, the sequel, and now I am being trained first by the Lord, but by Apostle Jill now, and I'm shadowing her, um, and I'm also assisting. So if you have any questions or anything you'd like uh, to invite us for, uh, please uh, give her a call um, and we will come on out and um, God will just be a blessing uh, to you. And it's, it's pure love um, and acceptance um, because uh, you are more than enough. Amen. And I wanted to say this before I know the closing is on. What you can expect is to actually begin to get protocols for mental health, protocols for different conditions through nutrition, through supplementation, uh, even essential oils, but also um, digestive health. It's so important. A lot of us just put up with these conditions and say, well, it's just a part of living, part of being old. Well, guess what? God restored me and Sherry to our youthfulness. Yes. I looked a 100-pound skeleton with cancer, 100-pound skeleton looking 100 years old. Sherry... Uh, look like a zombie. Frankenstein. So what I'm saying is that um, I took Frankenstein and put him on the table and, uh, mm. and the Lord used me, but it was from him right. being able to give us this new wineskin for cancer, addictions, mental illness, and helping the whole being be set free by the power of God, power of nature, power of revelation and wisdom, and power of love, most of all, and to overcome. And so I want to thank you for having us today. And what, just to piggyback, that this is real. And that um, I know there's a lot of people out here and, and they're great. And a lot of people talk it. But the, then I know you, you want to know if this is real. Because you're, t you're tired of hearing speakers and, you know, this and that. And, and you're like, okay, well, where, where is it? Are, are people involved? Is Because you, you want to know the proof. Well, here I am, yeah. and this is for God first, but and Apostle Jill. But this is the proof mm -hmm. that I'm walking and talking it, and that if if this is if I can do it, you can do it. But it's not just a rambling non, but this is real. This is real life with real people, and that I am a prototype, and I'm a blueprint of this. This is real. And the, it, you're the evidence, a testimony of God's, uh, God's faithfulness and his mercy and grace. Exactly. And also with me being a prototype saying, and all the women have something, Sherry's with a forerunner because she's the one that really wanted the most hunger. So it never ended, but the ladies are right behind her. Yes. And um, also um, we're all a prototype of what the new wineskin is gonna be in every area of where we've overcome and we're there to help and teach, and we're so excited about it, so I know we're running out of time, but thank you so much for having oh, us. We, no, you're, you're welcome. And you this, ladies have uh, given the people a lot of good information thank tonight. Thank you, yes. And uh, I'm sure they've enjoyed hearing everything you had to say. And uh, this is 
the show has gone the way I was hoping it would go. Wow, yay. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, and um, do you mind if uh, me and Sherry just pray our Father prayer before we go out? Go ahead. So let's pray that prayer for everyone. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth that is as in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and your power, and your glory, forever and ever. Amen. And thank you for watching APN TV tonight. And we hope to see you again soon. Don't you wake my day